Hey guys, it's 10, well, it's 10.01, and uh, I don't have a whole lot done, and certainly none of the theme has shown up here. I've been uh, keeping a time lapse, so I'll be publishing a time lapse uh, of all, everything that I've done uh, this weekend on this project, and so you'll see me doing a little bit of research. I was looking at, um, well, here I'm just looking at draw gizmos, but I was looking at some genetic programming stuff. And uh, I got to tell you, most of it's pretty above my head right at the moment. Uh, hold on, I'm switching my headset. Um, I don't know why I told you that because you wouldn't have heard anything, but I heard a lot. So um, what I've got right now is I've got a function that makes a array of cubes. This sounds pathetic at this point. Um, Where's my main camera? I want it to be at negative 14. So this is actually a bunch of little cubes. And um, as I said, I was going to be making a little bit of fun of Peter Molyneux here. So that's that's where the inspiration of this comes from. Um, the uh, this It looks just like a plane or something at this point, but I'm, I'm adding a function right now to make these cubes explode when you click on them. So we're going to do that. Um, the only code I've got here so far is my uh, uh, make a bunch of cubes, which is um, just makes a array of cubes. And you've seen this one before, detect clicks and touches. This is my uh, catch-all for, for handling mouse and touch events for uh, interacting with objects in the scene. So basically this just sends uh, clicked to uh, other objects that have been clicked. So I'm just going to create a gib on clicked here. So we need um, a clicked function, void clicked. And we don't care about where on the cube it was clicked, so that'll be enough right there. And I'm going to do public um, game object array gibs. You've seen this stuff before too, I'm sure. Public, well, I'm not sure. I mean, maybe you're joining me for the first time here, but, um, but yeah. Um, public game object gives um, and uh, public float, no, um, int amount. That's so that I don't have to duplicate a bunch of objects because I'm probably just going to have these explode into smaller cubes and I don't want to have to drag in 30 of the same cube just to get more gibs. So um, all this is going to do is we're going to destroy the game object. And we're gonna spawn our gibs, um, and I'm gonna do that first. It, it do technically doesn't matter, but I like to do destroy at the end because it feels like the object's going to be gone. It actually isn't. It, it waits till the end of the frame, so anything in your script will still happen even if you destroy early on. Um, so what am I doing? Uh, uh, destroy or object and um, spawn our gives and uh, oh yeah we can have an explosion force to public um, float explosion force um, alright so what we're gonna do is spawn our gives we're gonna take um, uh, for each game object gib in Gibbs, and we're gonna do um, game object uh, uh, instance equals instantiate Gib, and where do we want it instantiated? Probably. Oh yeah, we want to put some random explosion force and uh, public float um, uh, explosion radius. So we're going to do um, what do we want to do? Random dot uh, inside unit sphere times explosion radius. This is just to get them so that they're not interpenetrating as much. Um, and we'll do um, 
what is it called? Quaternion. Um, we'll just do Quaternion Identity. And uh, finally, we're gonna if um, instance dot rigid body instance dot rigid body dot add explosion force um, explosion force um, transform dot position. Oh, and transform dot position plus random inside unisphere times explosion radius. Okay, so transform dot position, and then finally explosion radius is explosion radius. Let's give these some meaningful default values. I'm going to go for 500.0f, and I'm going to go for um, radius of cubes are one, so we'll just do 1.0f. Radius. Technically we should do probably 0.5. Yeah, let's do 0.5. And we can hit save on that. And now um, let's make some cube gives real quick. So I'm going to create, oh, cannot implicitly convert type to game object. Oh, that's right as game object. So, does this run? Looks like it. And I can take chunks out of it, so that means that part's working. Look, I can dig. It's like Minecraft. Yeah, I just made Minecraft. No, I, I didn't. The, the funny thing is I actually know someone who's working kind of on a Minecraft clone, which is uh, ambitious. It's it's tough. It's not easy stuff. Um, just because it's cubes doesn't make it easy. Um, all right, so um, here's a good first start. Let's actually add some gibs because I like things to explode. I want to see if that stuff works. So we're going to create a cube. We're going to make the cube a... Uh, what are we going to make it? We're just going to shrink it down a little bit. I think I'm going to make it uh, one quarter the size, which is actually just one half in every dimension, right? Does that make sense? One, two, three. Okay, so that's one eighth the size. That's fine. That's perfect. Um, I think. We'll find out. So we're going to throw this in, we're going to call this not cube, we're going to call this cube gib. We're going to make a thingy, get rid of that. And then our cubes are going to have a cube gib. We're going to multiply it by 8. Actually I want to set the default of amount to 1 so that it will be easier to use. Oh, I did no, don't open anything. I want to develop, I, I don't need an open button. I don't even use you separate of Unity. Um, all right, so hit play. So now hopefully when I hit one of these, oh, it worked. It doesn't look like it works because our cubes don't actually have rigid bodies. So that'll help a lot. Um, Cube give. We want this to have a rigid body. We're going to have it use gravity. That's great. Um, and then we're going to hit play, and it's going to we're going to kind of come to rest in place. This doesn't look like it's working right. Looks like it's making one. Oh, of course it's making one. Why would it be making anything less than one? Um, let's do... Four... Okay. Four... Uh, int i equals zero. i is less than... 
amount I plus plus All right, so now it should spawn a few cubes. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Yeah, I think those cubes need to be a little smaller, and they probably don't need to hit everything. Yeah, they're definitely too big for eight, at least. I think I should have done it four. No, it seems like point five should be... So that's half, half, half. Um, it's just 2.25, whatever. It's definitely not enough explosion force. So let's... Um, Let's add a zero. That's that's the ticket right there. Blow those cubes out of there. Oh uh, yeah, that's that's a bit much. Works. <laughs> it's a bit much though. All right, so let's do explosion force. Um. First, let's make this 1,000. That's probably better than 5,000. And um, I'm going to, again, this, what does this have to do with evolution? Well, nothing yet. So so we'll, we'll see how I shoehorn that later. I kind of, the basic idea, I'm not sure if it's going to be any fun, is um, I'm basically going to have this be a block removal type game. Um, but you'll be able to um, create tools or or critters that can cre destroy blocks for you and breed them or something i don't know we'll figure something out um as i said when i was looking at genetic programming stuff and genetic uh, algorithms and stuff i uh was like oh i don't know if i can learn this fast enough um but i really want to try so i'm gonna put a little offset for the gib on clicked thing so that um uh, public float, no, public vector three explosion offset equals, what does it equal? Um, hmm. explosion force, explosion radius, explosion offset. Oh yeah, vector three dot zero. But then when we actually okay, so uh, transfer note position times uh, plus explosion offset. All right, so now I'm gonna actually make the explosion offset on my cube gib. No, on my cube. Yeah, there we go. Um, explosion offset. We're going to set it in the Z just a little bit. Uh, negative one, positive one, positive one. Let's try that. So now they'll blow out of the cube. At least that's the theory. Uh, let's make the explosion radius bigger. too much radius 1.0 and let's go back to 2000 maybe let's double the force It's looking a little bit better. 
And finally, let's make it so that they don't actually um, collide with much of anything. Um, Gibbs. And we're just going to. Oh, whoops, that's not what we want. We want Gibbs. Don't really want that there. Uh, project settings, physics. Gibbs. It's weird making something for myself right now. Because, I mean, like, I I enjoy making, uh, yeah, Gibbs don't want to do, collide with anything. Um, I enjoy uh, making stuff on Cooking with Unity, but, uh, but, I mean, mostly we remake stuff that's already there. And most of the time I'm doing it just for educational purposes and stuff that's pretty easy to do. And I love doing the show, but, like, it's kind of, it's a different deal when you're kind of making your own thing, so hopefully this isn't too boring for people. Um, give on clicked. What did I just do? My brain don't work. Um, game, uh, give on clicked. Oh, um, I wanted to make sure the cube gibs were in the gibs layer. So now they'll ignore things. And hopefully that'll help with the exploding. I wonder why so many of them aren't doing anything. That's weird. Um, let's try a smaller explosion offset. 0 0.5. Some still seem to be just falling straight down for no reason. Very few times do things fall for no reason, so let's actually see what's going on here. If it's just a rigid body, so it should be doing this to all of them. Hmm. Let's make a separate spawn radius. Public float spawn radius equals 0.5f. Um, spawn radius. And this way we can up our explosion radius without upping our spawn radius. So. That already fixed it up pretty nicely, didn't it? Yeah, that's looking good. That's looking real good. It's a bit too much force, honestly. So let's fix that. I can't do this one real time in the editor because these are instantiating um, at a different point. Better. Still could probably go a little bit lower. Let's go to our initial 500. I just like making things look kind of good. Maybe gravity isn't... Maybe gravity is not good. Let's turn off gravity and see how that looks. kind of like that. Yeah, I do like that. Alright, let's make a quick script to clean up all of these horrible number of cubes that we're dealing with. Um, clean up the cubes. How are we cleaning up the cubes? Uh, super easy. C-sharp script. Destroy on invisible. I've rewritten this function a whole bunch of times. I've, I've gotten to the point where I think I might be faster at writing this function than I am at finding 
the version that I've already written. Um, Floyd on uh, on became invisible. Destroy game object. That's it. <laughs> Throw that on our cube gibbs, and now we won't have the cubes surviving forever. Well, unless they go like in a really bad direction for us. Let's tunnel through this thing. Oh yeah, got all the way through. So this is already looks more fun than Molyneux's game. Uh, again, sorry Peter Molyneux if you ever watch this, I am sorry. Um, if you want to hire me at any point, go ahead. I'd love to work for you, I'm sure. Um, at least you get to be creative and kind of have some fun with things. And I could say that I work with Peter Molyneux, who's one of my heroes. So, But seriously, cubes. <laughs> so... Uh, why is this? This is actually, this shouldn't be fun, but it is. Maybe Molyneux's game is going to be great. <laughs> uh, I need a second opinion. Uh, Phil, get over here. What's that? Here, I, I want you to tell me if this is fun. That's fun? Yeah. Here, here no, I'm, go. I'm good with that. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, this is kind of fun. <laughs> It's because they're flying at you. Yeah. It's fun. See, that's what Molyneux's game is missing: people flying or cubes flying at the player. <laughs> that's awesome. The last time I was excited about a Peter Molyneux game was Fable, though. We all saw how that turned out. Oh, uh, Fable One was disappointing. I actually kind of liked two, yeah. but um, I hear it was good. I didn't. I didn't play three, so I can't judge that one. But I didn't like the revolutionary style but um well, the next one's fable horse carriage riding so that's cool that's the connect game right yeah Did that that's not out yet no i don't think so i don't think that's coming out yeah i have a, i have a feeling that one's dead <laughs> <laughs> yeah but that that's pretty fun yeah i'm 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 liking it uh i don't know why it's simple but it's kind of fun um, I want to make these cubes different colors so that things get all freaking fruity. Actually, let's 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 make this a seizure seizure game. Uh, I'm gonna create a material. It's gonna be called the. Um, I'm gonna call this the cube material. And I'm gonna create another material called cube gib. Material. I wonder how this is showing up on the video. I know, I, I run this um, this video at 10 frames per second. It looks really awful with my face on it, but um, the main reason I do it is because I need you guys to be able to see text and stuff that I'm typing, and so I'm running at a really high resolution and really low. I mean, this is running at 500 kilobits per second, which that's insane. Like I I I am I'm so impressed with modern compression technology. Um, and how all this works, because the fact that I can send 1280 by 720 at 500 kilobits per second is just amazing. And the reason it's so low is because um, I'm in Bend, and this is, like, the best upload bandwidth you can get here without starting to pay the, like, corporate levels of, of yeah, we'll just bring in some fiber, yeah. I should I should see if I can, like, go in on whatever Sony's using. Just be like, do you do you have some lines? Can you run one to like the antiquarian shop? <laughs> you know, it, it, certain areas around town have really fast internet, though. Like they have fiber. Some there actually is town. some fiber here. Oh, maybe I should uh, look into that. Maybe that you'd think that they put that downtown, but uh, oh, whatever. I'll I'll check with I'll check into that. Um, it's worth it to look. Yeah, definitely. I'm yeah. still clicking cubes. Why am I doing this? It's not though. It it can't be. It That's impossible. Um, cube Gib and Cube. Uh, Star Wars references. Yeah. Yes. That's impossible. All right. So I need to steal something from the internet. Um, uh, HSB 
Unity. I found this uh, when I was working on a project at work, actually, and uh, and I'm so thankful for uh, the pew pew sound. By the way, is uh, from Phil's Phil's game he's working on right now, which is cool. He's uh, you're not doing the competition; you're just gonna be yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's working on his own project, which is which is good because he's got he's far in it right now, and he could probably finish it up this weekend actually if oh, he's. That's not, true. that's not true. Okay, well, he'll finish. He'll be finishing it up sooner than he thinks. Probably. All right. So. So HSB color. What this is is uh, magic. Um, it's a class for doing hue, saturation, and brightness. I don't want a Java Java script. This is C sharp, right? Yeah, C sharp. That's what I thought. I I I do JavaScript if it was JavaScript. Uh, H S B uh, color. No color. And then we go in here and just paste this in. So what this is is um, for whatever reason, Unity does not have built-in hue, saturation, brightness as a um, type. And what, what hue, saturation, brightness is, is instead of red, green, and blue components, it's the hue, which is the color, the saturation, which is the amount of color versus not. So like if you have a saturation of zero, everything turns to uh, white. And then the brightness is uh, how dark it is. So if you, you have if you have satur if you have dr brightness of zero, it's black, um, and it's just a different way of looking at things. And I got really used to RGB. A lot of people are actually used to RGB. I'm kind of surprised um, because your brain doesn't really do things that way. Like your 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 color detection works that way. Like our our eyes detect colors basically using red, green, and blue. Um, I say basically because I'm sure that there's more to it than just that but um uh because we have like value receptors aside from our color receptors and there's a different ratio of those depending on what part of the eye you're talking about but anyway your brain kind of sees works with color differently like like it's more useful to work with hue saturation brightness because you basically can set a color and then you can desaturate it and that allows you to like instead of having to figure out okay so like a desaturated blue it it's not just like take blue and then if you if you have pure blue brightness is easy it's just like between 255 and 0 as you go down with the amount of blue it, the brightness goes down but saturation has to do with the mixing of the other colors as you come in and if you have like something that's not a pure blue like if you want to have something that's like an aqua but then you want to bring it into a pastel range it's much easier to do that with uh, hue saturation hue saturation and brightness so i'm going to show you how how i'm going to use this here to uh, make our cubes um, cause epileptic seizures um, because I like seizures. Um, so what we're going to do is uh, basically just shift through the hue for everything. So I'm going to create a new C-sharp script. This is going to be called um, uh, um, cycle color um, cycle material colors. And what this is going to take is an array of materials. We don't do a lot of work with materials on Cooking with Unity, I was just thinking, because I'm not really an artist, so... So we constantly are just using, like, very basic, very, very basic stuff for rendering, and you can do a lot with Unity that's well beyond that. So, um, public float, speed, color speed, uh, speed, we'll just call it, uh, color speed. Eh, eh, eh. Alright, um, and on update, oh yeah, we, we need, uh, what we're doing, uh, public material, uh, array materials void update and we're going to um, just simply do a oh yeah um, public f 
float. Not float. Do we want to float? Yeah, we want to float. Um, public float. Actually, we want private float. Um, current hue equals current hue. Um, and actually, instead of color speed, I'm going to go with hue speed because this actually might turn into something more crazy than just rainbows. But we're going to start with rainbows. So um, on update, what we do is um, we take for each material, material, in materials. As you've probably noticed, um, I'm not afraid of using the capital and lowercase to make things as confusing as possible. Actually, I I think this is kind of self-explanatory type stuff, but like, if you're not used to capital letters, you probably want to use more unique names than what I do. Because So I've got capital material, which is the type, and then I've got the name material, which is not the type, but that particular ma uh, material, and then it's in materials, which is plural, so... So, it, it, it reads nicely for me, but, like, it, it can get confusing, and you have to make sure you're typing stuff right. Usually on C-sharp, it's not big of a deal, because you'll just get a compile error if you screw something up, so... That's why I like C-sharp. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. Um, uh, if you're using JavaScript, highly recommend... I think that it defaults to doing this now, but I highly recommend if pragma strict is not up at the top, add it. It will save your life. Because the moment you misspell something and it just assumes that it's zero, you're going to be like, why? Why is this zero? This, sh this is a variable. This I, I checked it. I just checked it in the inspector. It's not freaking zero. And then you're like, oh, oh, I put a capital in the wrong place. Okay. <laughs> so so material.color. There we go. That's, that was fast. Um, uh, ch equals... All right, let's uh, let's make our color first. So color, color equals <laughs> uh, color color equals um, HSB color. Actually, new HSB color. Why is that not showing up? Is this not compiled or something? Uh, oh, there we go. Uh, hue saturation brightness alpha. We don't care about alpha. Let's just do hue saturation alpha uh, brightness. So hue is going to be current hue. Saturation, we're just going to do 1.0 right now. And brightness is going to just be 1.0. So this is um, this is the standard float notation. Um, if you do colors, I, let, let's see. Color new color um, RGB so yeah they're, they're floats so what it means is 1.0 is 100% and anything less than 1.0 is less than 100% um, in the case of the uh, HSB color class it actually allows you to go above and possibly below the normal clamped values in these cases and it creates interesting effects I don't actually know what they mean mathematically and I'm not even sure if it should allow that, but it actually was kind of cool when I was playing around with it. I was, it surprised me when I was playing around with it in the inspector. So this is a HSB color, so that's not going to work. To It will return an HSB color, but we can do dot um, to color, and then it becomes an actual color. Um, so this will give us uh, a current hue, and so material.color equals color. So, let's see if this works. Oh, yeah, this doesn't do anything. Well, it'll do something. So I'm just going to attach it for fun anyway. Um, so I'm going to create a new empty game object and call this um, Material FX. Uh, basically, I'm going to be attaching scripts to this that manipulate materials directly. Now... You could set this up so that you put it on the game object, and the game object just modifies this renderer.material, but the problem with that is um, anything that has a different material will be an extra draw call, and when you 
call renderer.material, it actually creates a duplicate of the material. So it instantly, whatever object calls this now is will forever be a separate draw call. Um, unless you do some weird, you, you don't want to do it, but you could actually get that and then store it and give it to some other object or something, but it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, and there's so many better ways of doing it, like how I'm going to do it here. Um, so all this object does is is just going to be a script repository of stuff that works on other ob other objects and prefabs. So I'm going to attach cycle material colors. We're going to throw our cube material in here. And hue speed doesn't do anything yet. So if we hit play, all the cubes should be red. And I'm right. They are all red. Perfect. Um, the, okay, the gibs, I didn't change the gibs, but the reason they're all red is because zero hue is red. Um, and it's basically done just like a rainbow. Zero is red, one is red, and then everything in between is red, orange, yellow, um, green, blue, indigo, violet, and then back to red. So what that means is, is all we have to do is cycle the hue and it will uh, do a little rainbow effect. So what we're going to do is um, current hue uh, plus equals um, hue speed. And then I'm going to go ahead and clamp, uh, wrap it automatically. I, this would probably just work as is, but I'm going to wrap it so that we don't end up with floating point precision errors if we run it for like six and a half hours or something. So, uh, plus equals hue speed. Oh, wait. Plus equals hue speed times time dot delta time. Um, current hue plus equals hue speed times time dot delta time. Because we want it to be f not based on the frame rate, but based on seconds. So, if current hue is um, greater than 1.0 f, um, current hue hue minus equals 1.0 f and we're going to do another if statement if it's less than zero and we got to put these things in there uh, less than zero then it's plus equals 1.0 f uh, this has a few degenerate cases that we're not going to worry about. Um, if you have the acceleration, if it goes more than, like if it ends up in 2.0, one frame it'll be at 1.0 minus that, and then the next frame it'll be fixed again. So it doesn't really matter, so I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to set the hue speed to something meaningful. Um, let's have it cycle the whole way every second. Let's just do 1.0 to be the start. And uh, equals... So, in theory, this should make our cubes start being awesome. So if we hit play... Yep, we have a rainbow cube. Told you we'd get the uh, seizures going real quick here. It's a rave cube. Rave cube. So, um... Now I'm going to actually add this again to material effects so that I can add my cube give material. Now I could have put this in the um, in the same script and it would just cycle at the same rate, but I want them to cycle differently. So I'm going to try actually doing negative one and see if it creates this contrast on the uh, on the cubes on the gibs. It does. Perfect. It's like exactly what I wanted. Oh, that works out really nicely. This is actually the first time I've done some retro palette shifting style effects and things, so I'm kind of having some fun here. <laughs> this is stupid. Um, that actually looks really good, though. Look Here, look at it with the gibbs now, because I've got the gibbs going the opposite direction. <laughs> so they, like, That's contrast, awesome. but they're also still raving. That's really cool. Now make them go, like, 20 times faster, so... That kids will have seizures. All right, you want twenty no, times no, faster? No, I'm just kidding. But you can see it if you want to. Yeah, let's let's try twenty times faster. Let's do it just for the Gibbs. Let's make the Gibbs like freaking crazy. 
Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that reminds me of uh, in Super Mario World. You break apart those white blocks. Or Mario 3 when you break apart the yeah. white yeah. blocks. Yeah. That's what that looks like. <laughs> I think you should keep it. I like it. I'll keep it. Yeah. That's cool. You can't see it on the video, unfortunately. Um, but, uh, yeah, these things are flashing, flashing crazy. As a matter of fact, um, there's a... The game on iOS that that reminds me, um, Edge. Edge kind of has this uh, flashiness to their cubes, although they have a cooler palette um, because they understand color theory probably better than I do. Um, <laughs> I'd say that's still pretty cool. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of happy with it. Um, I'm gonna actually make the main cube cycle much slower, but I'm gonna keep the small one cycling really freaking fast. So um, I'm gonna do. It's gonna do point one. Let's just see how slow that is. Ten times slower. Yeah, I kind of like that. Um, I'm gonna make this cube spin or something. Cube spin. Cube spin. Let's, um, hmm. yeah, we'll just make a uh, parent game object, create empty, oh wait, we don't need, yeah, actually, let's change our create, um, where is it, make a bunch of cubes, that's what I called it. <laughs> Such a stupid name. Well, it's uh, what it, does. it is. It is what it does. But uh, so create a bunch of cubes. Um, we're gonna make it so that it actually parents these to the, uh, which is why I had this cube instance in the first place. I knew I forgot something. Cube instance dot uh, transform dot parent equals transform. All this does is it makes it so the spawner, which is this uh, cube array spawner, uh, this draws the things because I've got draw gizmos on here, but uh, it makes it so um, it will actually, all of the cubes become a child of this object, which means that I can then manipulate this object and it will manipulate all the child cubes, like we could scale it or do weird stuff and everything will actually respond to that. And the clicking still works, that's cool. So. I'm just going to have this thing spin around a little bit. See, the game is evolving, and that's the theme. No, I'm not going to stand by that one. Don't worry, I'm going to throw... There's going to be some evolution in there. I have no idea what, but we'll we'll get it in there. Um, even if we don't, it'll. I'm going to have some fun with whatever we make. Um, so, cube array, directional light, main camera, material effects. Um, let's make this... Let's make this cube spin. So we're going to make the cube array actually have a, um, a rigid body. Why not? And we're not going to use gravity because that'll screw us real quick. And we're going to freeze the position, but we're not going to freeze the rotation. Um, hmm. Maybe I should apply a force. To, I wonder if that works. Like, I don't know how. Oh, wow, that totally broke my. Uh... Huh, give on click doesn't work right now with that. Why did that change that? Destroys the game object. Oh, it's probably interrupting. The cube array probably has some sort of collision property now. Okay, so we're not going to use a rigid body on that. Screw that. I don't have time to figure out what I'm going to be doing about that. All right, we'll just do the old-fashioned way. C sharp script. Um, spin object. Welcome, Mono Develop. All right. I I like the brackets 
on the second line. I really need to get Mono Develop set up so that it does the things I like it to do. Because um, I I always feel like I have to fight it a little bit. Although that that actually right there is not Mono Develop. I don't think that I can actually directly fix that one just because um, that's uh, Unity generating this file. So Yeah, you could do a format. Or you could check Mono Develop's formats and then just do a format right at yeah. the beginning. But that's it, an extra step. Yeah, eh, it's I don't know. Yeah. Maybe it's therapeutic a little bit to put those on another line. I guess that's how I'm going to justify it tonight. No, you don't have to justify it. Do you? I know I don't, but I am because I have an audience. <laughs> um, actually, that's a lie. Actually, is that a lie? Do I have an audience? I'm going to I'm going to open up Colloquy and find out if people have been yelling at me on the on the uh, internet's. Yeah. I have a feeling that no one's no one watching. I didn't I didn't advertise this at all, other than on on there itself. Um, yeah, that's looking pretty pretty barren. I can hear the crickets. Oh, two two members, Retrona Games. Hey, dude. I actually have some someone watching. Oh, perfect. Thanks for the info. Why am I typing that and saying it? You can hear me. All right. You can hear me, right? Okay. Um, good to see someone on here. All right. Now I can feel all embarrassed. Uh, public. Uh, what are we doing? Um, I'm just going to do horizontal and vertical rotation. There should be three, right? There, uh, horizontal, vertical. Oh, yeah. Yaw. Yeah. We might want that. Um, I guess we'll just do a vector three. Now let's do it as three separate things. Oh, thank you very much. Um, public float. Um, hey, Phil. <laughs> Phil has joined the chat room. Yeah. Um, public float. Um, spin X. Why not? I probably should do this as a vector, but yeah, I'll do it as a vector. Vector 3. Spin. Amount. Just call it that because I'm kind of going to be abusing it as a vector. Um, update uh, game object dot rotate uh, dot. No, oh, sorry, just transform dot rotate um, the Euler angles axis. Like maybe it's just maybe just spin amount. We'll do this spin amount times time dot dot delta time. Let's see if it does what I wanted to do. Um. Oh yeah. And let's actually default this to vector equals new vector three. No, sorry, not new vector three. I can just do vector three dot one. This represents a one 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 vector. So um, hit play. It's not going to do anything because I'm not doing anything with it. Things are still working though. Oh man, I I need to figure out a way to get. I need to figure out a way to like switch modes while I'm encoding to a lower resolution. I don't think that's possible. That's a shame. I'll probably have to put a demo of this up somewhere so people can actually play around with it. So, let's see, spin object. So we're going to put this on cube array, and let's see if it... Yeah, yeah, no, I, yeah. So, there it is, it's spinning, and it appears to be spinning... Oh, it's probably spinning on a single axis. Let's, let's check this. So if we do x equals 0, z equals 0, if we do just x, it should spin forward like tumbling. There we go. Um, now if we do X and Y it should be... Uh, is Y the one we like? Yeah, X and Y. So it should tumble in kind of a corner direction. Yeah. Yeah, that's working. Let's actually make these some meaningful values. So let's do like 50. Uh, 
All right, let's do 50, 25, and 5, and see how that looks. 50 is probably too much. Yeah, we've got this nice little off-kilter spin now. All right, let's um, let's take this down to 20, and let's do uh, 15 and 10, and see how this looks. Cool. We got. This is kind of a game. <laughs> Stupid game, but it's kind of a game. Um, I don't like that direction that's spinning. I don't like that it lines up perfect. Uh, I kind of like that it lines up perfectly occasionally, but uh, I'm just gonna make it negative values and see how that see how that makes me feel. It's really weird how you can just be playing around with stuff and be like, yeah, this doesn't feel right. What's up with that? Like, there's, there's, like, see, like, I like this better, and it's just spinning in the opposite direction, and that's stupid. Why would I like this better? It just feels better for some reason. I like the way we set this up, because the explosion forces is going to always push them towards the screen. Now, if we move the camera, it would not, so... Maybe I'll maybe I'll make an explosion. That's that may be a modification I need to do to my Gib thing that allows it to always spew at camera, where it actually attempts to f to find the vector towards the camera as opposed to. Uh, that's kind of cool. That's really cool. <laughs> so stupid. Um, all right, so uh, yeah, I've got something going here. Again, doesn't really have a lot to do with evolution. Maybe maybe we'll just click on these cues and then we'll breed them. And based on the blocks they have, it will create new cubes? I don't know. Maybe, maybe Justin will contact me tomorrow and be like, I want to work on this and I'll have art. And all of a sudden we'll be able to do more interesting stuff. <laughs> Are you uh, doing anything heavy on the internet right now, Phil? No. Just curious. Okay, because it seemed like my quality went to crap, but yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, I just was checking. I I wasn't accusing. Sorry, that didn't. Yeah, um, that didn't come out as nicely as I wanted. Um, so uh, let's let's see how we're we gonna wrap this up. There was something that I wanted to do. There's enough frame rate here that I, sometimes they don't look like they're flashing enough. Um, maybe I could, maybe I should put a variable that makes it so it doesn't do it based on frame rate. It just cycles every frame. That's fun. I like stupid things. Um, Oh yeah, I thought I thought of something stupid. Let's make something that collects the cubes for no reason, just because it would be cool. And then I think I'm gonna sign off for tonight. Um, and uh, I will be doing more coverage tomorrow. I'm I'm a really bad Ludum Dare person as far as, like, I'm not one of the people that's going to stay up the whole time and make a game, which is awesome. Like, those people, they make the best stuff because they have the time to do it. And um, I, I'm i probably not going to be broadcasting again until tomorrow night, and then I'm going to do a few of them on Sunday. Uh, Sunday I actually have free. Um, Saturday I have a couple things I need to do, and also I do most of this from my mom's bookstore, and she's open during the day, and she's open on Saturdays. So, um... So yeah, yeah, I'm working out at my mom's place. Yeah, no. I don't live with my mom though, so thank God. Um, so uh, not that there's anything wrong with living with your mom, 
I have a problem living with my mom. <laughs> so there's a there's a distinct difference. So no no offense to people who are living with their mom. Actually, that's really good financial sense in this economy right now. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna create a couple objects around here. Um, new create empty. I'm gonna call this a black hole. And I'm going to create a uh, C-sharp script. We're just going to call this, um, I'm going to call it Add Explosion Folders, um, because that's actually what we're going to be using. But uh, a lot of people don't actually know that you can use negative values on Add Explosion Force, and it will suck things in. It's pretty cool. Um, I probably should have called this Continuous Explosion Force. I'm going to change it to that. Um, Continuous explosion force, and we're gonna do change it to continuous explosion force here, and then double click it because modern develops gonna be confused. Uh, reload, whatever. Reload. No. Oh. No. Close without saving. What am I doing? Magic. All right, so I guess I type continuous one more time. All right, so continuous explosion force. And all this is going to do is we're going to give it a public float explosion force. Explosion. Yeah. Why does that happen? It's the same word that I've been using the whole night, and now it just looks stupid. Um, explosion force, public float, explosion radius, and we'll just assume we're not going to do an offset on this one. So, um, what am I getting? People are like, "Why did you have to? Why did it have to be evolution? Boring and done to death." That's my uh, my. Uh, that's Justin. He just texted me. Why did it have to be evolution? Boring and done to death. Well, what's funny about that is, even though it's boring and done to death, um, it was it had never been voted in for Ludum Dare before, and it's been in almost all of the, the voting things. They actually had that trivia on the site, but that's something I've witnessed, too. It's almost always in there, and it almost never get, wins. So, probably there's some people that were like, yeah, it won, but we wanted a thousand cats. <laughs> <laughs> like, I wasn't joking about that. Thousand kittens... I, I could have done some sprite art. Justin could have done some stuff. We'd be doing some particle effects. We'd just be throwing a, throwing cats everywhere. And it would have been awesome. Just just lots of cats. But now we're... Um, now we got to figure something to do that's not cats. Actually, we could probably have cats in there too, but I, I, I don't know. Um, so, uh, rigid body dot... Actually, we'll do a buffer check too. If... Rigid body. And actually, I'm even going to have an error for this. Um, else. Debug dot error. Log error. And then we just do um, uh, no rigid body. Um, attached to object. I'm going to actually put continuous explosion force. And then I'm going to put the object context. What is it? Uh, just game object. No. Game object. So now if we don't have a rigid body attached, we'll immediately know. So if rigid body, oh, no, that's not right. That's not right at all. Um, oh, yeah, we're not affecting the object. We're affecting the objects around it. So we have to get the ones that are in around us. Okay, we can do this. Um, uh, for each game object... OBJ in 
uh, physics dot overlap sphere um, oh wait, it's going to be collider 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 and physics dot overlap sphere transform dot position and the radius will be explosion radius um, collider what was what's this complaining about bridge collider in physics dot overlap sphere I'm going to do explosion force equals 500.0f and explosion radius we're going to make 1.0f by default, although I'm probably going to make that considerably larger. Um, uh, collider dot rigid body. What is it complaining about? Oh, that's what it's complaining about. Collider dot rigid body. That does that work? Is that a real thing? Collider. Why? Hit save. Gonna get rid of this. Hit save. There's no problems. All right. Collider dot. There we go. Rigid body. Dot add explosion force. Um. Explosion force. So we're going to actually modulate that based on time dot delta time, should we? Does that make sense? Yes. Yes, it does make sense. Um, explosion force times time dot delta time and then uh, transform dot position and then finally explosion radius. And that's all it oh and actually if collider dot rigid body. Actually can I do an assignment in here? Can I can I be super freaking fancy? Um if rigid body um rig equals collider dot rigid body is probably gonna complain about this. It totally does. I could get away with that shit in C. Um I think I could at least. Um, yeah, maybe I couldn't. Whatever. I just wanted to cache it so I didn't have to grab that every time, but whatever. Does not really matter. People always talk about caching like it's really a big deal, and honestly, I got away with so much. I, I need to profile my, my Proton Pulse because I, we got, I make it faster, but it runs pretty dang good on like iPad 1. And uh, that was my target platform, and it works pretty good on 3GS as well. And I didn't really do any optimization on that game, so I got really lucky, I think. I think I just got totally lucky. Um, so collider.rigidbody, explosion force, okay. Um, that should be it. Now what we're going to do, actually, I'm going to make an on gizmos for this. Uh, void on gizmos. The reason I'm doing this is I want to see this, the radius of what this is going to affect on the screen. So we're just going to draw what gizmos dot draw. Please have sphere. Yes, draw sphere. Actually, I like wireframe spheres too. Is there a, there was a wire sphere? Yay! All right, draw wire sphere. I swear these weren't in there at one point because I swear there's one where I did little crosses instead of cubes, even though cubes would have been perfect. Um, so draw wire sphere, uh, center is transform dot position, and uh, radius is explosion radius. So now we'll be able to see in the editor exactly what this is going to affect, like what area this is going to affect. That was a weird sound. What was that sound? wonder if that came out in the video or if I'm just crazy. Um... So I hit play. This is not going to do anything because I didn't actually attach anything to anything. Well, I mean, it's going to do something, but 
Um, let's do, um, what is it called? We're going to throw continuous explosion force on black hole. It does not match. Continuous. U.S. Okay, that's a problem. Uh. Eat it. So we attach this to our black hole. Continuous explosion. What? Did it still do that? Was that just a delay? That was a delay. That was it complaining about the same thing again. So, I don't see my, uh, my wire sphere. What is this? Oh. Oh, I should actually fix that. I'll fix that some other day. Um... That look. Oh, wait. We already fixed that part, didn't we? So why is it not drawing our wire sphere? It's not drawing our wire sphere on. Oh, draw gizmos. That's why it's not drawing our wire sphere. Five, four, three, two, one. Totally draw our. So draw it. Do it. I'm waving my fingers. I'm gonna move it. There we go. I had to move it. There we go. Yay, we can see the sphere. See? Look how useful that is. Alright. So we're gonna put this at uh, 0, 0, 0. And let's do negative 5. No, negative 10. Yeah, that'll be weird enough. Um, where's the camera at? Negative 14. Actually, let's make it 7. Let's put it right in the middle. Negative 7. And then let's make the... Uh, is that in the middle? Oh, I see. No, 10 is probably better. And let's make the uh, radius a little bit. I don't know why I'm doing this. It's just because I can at this point. Okay, we want the radius to be... That looks about right. Let's do 2. And we're going to make the explosion force negative 500. And we're just going to create little... I'm calling them black holes here. I should probably call them Lagrange points or something because that's more what I'm doing. I'm just kind of creating a collection of uh, of areas for cubes to collect. And um, I'm doing for the, this for no particular reason because um, that's part of the fun of making stuff with Unity is uh, you don't have to actually know what you're planning for it to come out good. Just creating one at every, uh, I want another one of these, thank you. Alright, and then finally we need the ones on the side, so we're gonna duplicate another one of these. And, uh, ten, and one more duplicate, negative ten. Now let's see what this does. This is going to be fascinating, maybe. I'm going to make them bigger. Let's make them five. And let's make the let's negative five thousand. That's probably too much, but we'll find out. Oh, okay. So they're only actually going into the one in the screen. 
because I'm not actually rotating them with the cube. I kind of want to rotate them with the cube, but I want to get them to the point where they actually... Let's have them apply some drag to the objects or something. Or maybe just apply some drag to the objects themselves. Um, let's put... Let's see what happens if I do 1.0 at drag. It's probably going to be a significant amount of drag. There we go. That's, that's more like it. Let's, um... Let's now go to our continuous... Exp let's go to these black holes again. Let's make the, uh... This much lower. Let's make it, uh... 1,000. One-fifth the amount. And once I get this working, I'm going to actually, uh... Retweak things a little bit. Oh, that is cool. Yes, I like that. Oh, that is so cool. There's no reason for it, but it's so cool. And we're just going to throw all these black holes in our cube array. And now the, the black holes will rotate as well. And so now we'll be creating these little orbiting things, I think, in theory. Let's see if we can see them. Drag's so high that some of these objects have stopped entirely. We're just going to keep breaking bricks and seeing what we get. Let's see what the editor looks like. That's so neat. <laughs> That's so dumb, but so neat. See if uh, it's creating these little black holes that collect the gibbs that orbit yeah, that's around cool. with. <laughs> um, yeah, that's pretty neat. kind of doing what I wanted it to do. It does end up jamming them together pretty good. Oh, I see. Part of this doesn't show to the camera very much, does it? Where is my camera? I don't even know where my camera is. How about we look for my camera? There it is. Camera's a lie. Main camera. There it is. Yeah, okay, so we need to get to this rotating more or less or something. I was rotating on a single axis. That's why I wanted to do that. Oh, and you can see that my debug uh, draw is actually not exactly right here. I'm gonna fix that real quick because I know why. I had an offset that I forgot to add and I didn't actually add it on the um, uh, renderer, the uh, rather the draw gizmo. So, um, where is that? That's uh, make a bunch of cubes. There we go. Um, where is that uh, offset? Offset. I did do the offset position. Transform the position plus offset. Why would that not be working right? Oh, it's because when they rotate, they they don't have the rotation information. No, that looks way off. Oh, I see. Yeah, there's the fix. I didn't. I was thinking of the wrong thing. So there, this will fix it right there. So now those wireframes will actually line up. Okay, yeah, there we go. And when we do this, uh, is that lining up? No, that's more off than it was before. Why?
What? Huh. Does it draw them from the corner or something? It shouldn't. Uh, negative num cubes x times... I saved it, right? Yeah, I saved it. Why is it further off than it was? Plus offset. I'm just going to copy and paste this. Uh, not the rotation portion, but just this thing right here. And paste. And then I'm going to copy and paste this. And then we're going to try this one more time. Yeah, it's totally not rendering over the cube. Weird. Huh. I'll fix that later. Anyway, uh, I'm going to sign off for tonight. I got some fancy stuff going. It's not really anything yet, but... And it has very little to do with evolution, but maybe we'll get that figured out at some point. Um, thank you for joining me for some Loot and Dare fun, and I uh, hope you guys are having fun on your own projects as well. Um, and uh, thank you, uh, Return of Games, for uh, joining, joining me live here. It's nice to have a little, little audience here. And... Uh, You've been really cool commenting on stuff. And, um, and yeah, so uh, I'm going to call it a night. Uh, I will see you guys tomorrow. Um, I'll probably be broadcasting around 7 or 8 tomorrow for the first time. So, And then probably another time that night. Um, may, maybe continuous too, who knows. Uh, so anyway, thank you very much and good night. Oh yeah, bye Proton Pulse. Whatever, I'm not putting it on the screen. Proton Pulse. Proton Pulse. All right. Good night, everyone. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and wait a few more minutes here while, um, because as I said, it sometimes cuts off the end of my video if I don't, so. You have a good night, too, sir. Thank you for coming in. You are a sir, right? Or uh, um, if that's not too much of a personal question. I use sir a lot, and I realize that I might, there might be female audience members sometime, potentially, so. Alright, cool. Alright, I haven't offended anyone then. Um, Alright, so, yeah, that should, uh, that should cover it. So, um, actual real good night now, and then I'll edit this down when I feel like it. Um, yeah, bye.